Howdy y'all, Mark Wheeler here with Wheeler Outdoors. And if you don't know, I love throwing chatterbaits. It's my top three baits that I throw at all times. Um, to the point of I have a specialized rod, I have a, you know the reel, I have everything just for chatterbaits. And of course I throw spinner baits and crank baits with the rod because it's uh, you know kayak, I can't carry 12 rods with me. But this is one of those things that I throw religiously. In the background, you see our uh, foster cat, Mr. Meow Machine. Yeah. Anyway, so let's get started. There are a few things I'm going to lay down my personal opinions. Um, I don't throw a jackhammer, um, chatterbait. Threw one, maybe twice. In my situations that I fish in, or I fish the chatterbait in, I don't see a need for it, per se. Um, I.e., I'm you know I'm fishing really fast, I'm fishing really hard, and I want the bait to do special things. Okay. Um, secondly, is I throw it in all cover. Most guys are going, dude, that you just don't throw it around wood and other things. I throw it in there, and I'll show you a few tricks or tips that I have to keep it from getting hung as much. It gets hung. But that happens. It doesn't matter if it's a crankbait, spinnerbait, you're going to get hung. Another thing I don't do. I don't do trailers that have a wide or any action to them. Zero. And we'll get to that in a second. So let me go over my chatterbaits, the, the colors I use. I use three main colors. Four. You know, I like the variety. Um, the four main colors, the trailers that I use or recommend, as well as the rod, the reel, the line, my complete package. Okay, so let's get started real quick. Um, let's go with original chatterbait. I throw the 3 8 99 times out of 100, it's a 3 8 The only time I go up to a half ounce, three quarter, or anything else, very specialized situations. 3 8 works for me in all depths, but especially in that shallow uh, less than six feet situation up to ten it's got the archie head on it see that big old archie head on there yeah um, blades don't really um, one thing is if you get the older chatter baits it has that snap on there um, I immediately change the snaps out every time I fish I carry a box full of them um, but with the newer chatter baits they don't have to worry about that um, Colors. Oh, let me get. I'm getting ahead of myself. Different styles that I have. The Arky, um, the Swing. Okay. I use these big swinging freaks of nature. Okay. These big guys got a a swing swivel head on it. I use those when I need a big profile, or I'm fishing brush. Okay. Um, and 99 times out of 100, if I'm fishing brush, I'm either using a green pumpkin or watermelon skirt, okay, a skirt like this, or during the shad spawn, okay. When the shad are spawning in that hard cover and you just brush all along the, the shoreline, I'll switch to one of these. Ooh. Don't play with that kitty. Um, that kitty. Um, I'll switch to one of these. I can skip it into that brush and bring it out and because of this extra wide gap hook on here okay there we go it comes through real really clean um, really like the head as well um, allows for that thing to swing and do a lot of good stuff um, this is the only time that I might put a swim bait trailer on there most of the time I don't I use you'll see in a second um, and the last one is actually the one um, that I have on here. The one I don't have is the weedless one. That's a secret. Okay. When you need to get in there and, and push through, that's the one you use. Okay. So, this one, it's just like it's an, you know, Arky head again, as you can see. Um, but instead of being able to take the, tri the skirt off, they've hand tied the skirt in. Okay, it's got a much beefier hook on it. I really like the keeper on there. And it uh, 
it's a really good chatterbait. Um, you know, really, really, really set up well. Um, really comes through cover really nice. Um, it gets hung up when I like it to. And that's the key to chatterbait fishing. And we're going to get to that in a second as well. If I let this dangle, the cat's going to get into it. And i got to hook cat. And I'm not cat fishing. I'm bass fishing. Okay. Trailers. It's pretty down and, and dirty. Okay. I do not use... Here's a swim jig. A swim jig has no action to it. It might wobble a little bit, but it all comes from that. The skirt, you know, pulsating, and the trailer. That's why the Alabama style of swim bait fishing, you, you shake that rod as you're reeling, and it gives it that action because they were using twin tail grubs that only kind of twisted a little bit. By pulsating it, by shaking the rod, it gave it a lot more action, right? Which is what you're looking for. Swim bait trailers are great for swim jigs. Swim bait trailers are not good for a chatterbait because that chatterbait's head is going to swing back and forth. Mr. Kitty again. Okay. And it's going to part its own action. It's going to shake. When you add a swim bait or, excuse me, Mr. Kitty, or, did you steal it? Did you steal those? Okay, I had to jump away real fast because I had to chase the cat down to get my bait back. Quit playing with the camera. Anyway, baits like a Rage Crawl, um, a Zoom uh, Z-Hog, where they've got big action in the tail. Swim baits, okay? I'll show you how to modify this in a second. Both of those have their own action. And when that head is wobbling in the front, right, because the head does this, and that body starts shaking with it, when you have something behind it that is giving a uh, different action, it actually kills the action and you don't get that solid feel and it, it forces me to start setting the hook unnaturally okay because one of the things when you're fishing a chatterbait all of a sudden if you don't feel that head going it's like oh you set the hook okay just do it you might be clearing the hook from with grass or the blade from grass or it might be a bass that came up and just and it's following with that bait you just jack them pretty simple okay do not use these. Definitely use a fluke, a sluggo. Um, any bait that's got a. Th okay, so I'm going to get in here. Make sure the light's right. You see that right there? This is my. Mm, this is my secret, okay? Um, trick worms. Uh, JP Hammer Shads, okay? Um, Let's see if I've got any others here. Um, anything that's got that club end, no real tail to it, but a club end, I find that that, bait, that sucker gets, gets that going. And that club all of a sudden swings over to one side and takes that whole bait and goes, Bew! and shoots it off and makes it hunt and dive and twist and turn. That's why I like the OG bait. Because the one like with this head, okay, this is the Elite. It doesn't do it like that. Deeper water, trying to travel straight through grass, bingo. Hydrilla, milfoil, coontail, stuff like that. It travels through them real nice. Okay, use that one. You're trying to find them, go with the OG. Arky head, club tail. And I'm telling you, a trick worm on there, ooh, that, that trick worm tail just kind of just goes behind it, just what it kind of looks like. And the water just fluttering behind there. Jackson, it's awesome. Okay. Um, all right. Another one. The Zico, Lake Fork, um, the Strike King, uh, Blade Minnow, or whatever it's called. These are great. Very subtle action. Really looks well. Looks really good in the water. Okay. And I promised I'd show you something to do. Let's say you're fishing, right? And you're going along and you see a ton of bluegill. You're in northern lakes. There's no shad, no herring. It's bluegill. It's like, oh, I need to switch it up. You go in your box. You don't have any green pumpkin or watermelon. You forgot your trick worms. You're, you're panicking. But you got some swim baits here in a bluegill-ish color. You know, watermelons, stuff like that, green pumpkins. Uh, this, I had to give props to uh, Wired to Fish and probably someone else 
what you do is you take this big tail, okay, like that, and you trim it off. Trim it nice and, and flat. Okay. See what I did there? Now, that tail is now going to go, go with it. One thing I also will do, okay, is a lot of these, I trip that that piece off there so now I have a flat surface. I trim the belly up a little bit. Like that. Now it skips really well. There we go. You can see what I'm doing there. Okay. I got that tail and I compact it really tight. Early season. Compact your baits. Get them smaller. That chatter beat when it's going through nice and small looks like those small bluegill, those small shad that have survived. And now they're you know, searching for food and whatnot, going through lily pad stems when they first start to come up. Giants. I'll show you one right here. Told you. <laughs> All off of something very similar. Okay. So we've gone over the different styles. We've gone over trailers. Pretty down and dirty, right? It's pretty simple. Let's go over the rod real fast. Because this is more important than anything else. As he walks through the valley of shadow of hooks, he shall feel near evil. Um, so my rod, okay, it is a 7-2, okay, medium, let me see if I can get this in the shot, very medium, lots of bend, pretty soft tip, okay, this is for several reasons, one, when you're fishing this bait and you're getting hung in grass and everything else, or when you feel a bite, never snap set this hook, okay? Reason is, and here's why, this blade, okay? This blade, when it comes to the water, is like this, okay? So imagine that, okay? A bass comes up and eats it. They usually come up and they roll on it like kitty they come up and they come in from the head right so you see how that that blade is like that okay that's his mouth you snap set the hook you just blew his mouth open with that blade okay by just like that okay you just blew his mouth open and you miss the hook set or you barely hook them and you're fighting them and you lose them okay but if you go ahead and you lean into them and just sweep set with a nice, excuse me, like a parrot. Never leaves me alone. Um, or a small child. Small child. Um, but you sweep set it, you lean into them, and you keep reeling. Okay? It's going to allow this blade that's in the way to pass forward, and then this bait will slide in and catch them every time. Deep. Okay, top of the mouth, right on the side of the, the, the gill plate, almost every time. Catches them in the same way, shape, or form. Even if they come in from behind and chase it down and follow it, you keep reeling. The whole key to this is you're here, right? And you just keep reeling, okay? Let's see if I can hook this on something. Of course not. When I wanted to hook on something, or when I don't want it to hook on something, I can hook it on everything. No, back kitty. Can't do that, I guess. <laughs> what you want to do is keep reeling. Okay? Reel, 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 reel. That line comes tight. That rod starts to bow. You know how hard it is to do a, a fishing video and the cat keeps on screwing it up? It's pretty hard. It is. Keep reeling. Let that rod load. Okay? It's literally going to be seconds. I'm not talking, you know, five, six seconds. Literally, you feel that. Do, do, do. You're like, oh, there he is. You keep reeling. Okay? Reel, 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 reel. And just lean into him. You know, I'm not saying this kind of lean, but you're reel, reel. And you, you put it over on him. Okay? You're going to hook him every time. Nine times out of ten... That bass is taking off. 
with the bait. Sideways, one way or the other. You're going to hook them. And just keep pressure. Just keep pressure. That's all you have to do. Keep reeling. Don't do anything crazy. You know, just keep reeling. Okay? You can, you can play them, but never bring the rod up. Always keep it to the side until it gets next to the boat. Then you just whoop and pick them up. Net them. Do whatever you need to do. That is the key to this bait. Think crankbait. Okay? Even though it has a single vertical hook, think crankbait. Keep pressure. Do it right. Fight them all in. And I'm telling you, you will catch more fish with a chatterbait. Always use a sweep set hook. I, I do it sometimes too. I set the hook like this. But if you can remember to sweep set them, you will catch more fish. It's simple, okay? Um, the reel, 6.5 to 1. Um, I personally get too jacked up. I start drinking some Mountain Dews. I have three cups of coffee. I start getting jacked up. I start throwing that chatterbait, and I'm ripping it through the grass as fast as I can. I personally need a 6.5 to 1, okay, um, to be able to slow myself down, okay? That is key, all right? If you're someone who naturally fishes slow, okay, go to 7 to 1. But the problem is, is that a lot of these chatterbaits, when you're going really, really fast, they lose control. That blade gets locked up or does some crazy things. Okay. And again, Mr. Cat, Mrs. Cat, get down. And we're back after cat time again. <sighs> but yeah, you'll be fishing this bait and start doing weird things. Stop. Six, five to one, best sign. Line, nothing less than 14. I personally use Sunline Sniper and, four, and 16 pound. That's my go-to, okay, for pretty much any techniques. I throw into everything. Um, don't use braid for this technique. Um, I strictly use fluorocarbon, okay, because of that. I last thing I need to do is worry about the last thing I need to do is worry about, you know, my gear breaking or not breaking. This is a one-on-one. Make a long cast. Start reeling. Pop the rod tip vertically. Okay. You're in open water. Pop that rod tip. This makes this bait go on, go on, go on. It goes, and it shoots at the side, shoots it up, shoots it over the side. And then once it's up there, it dives and then catches up again and takes off. If there's a bass following it, looking at it, sees it dart up, it's going to hammer it on when it, it's going to dart up and then slide and slink. It's going to go up and this way, up this way. Very rarely does it go straight down again. It kind of glides until you catch up to it and it goes again. And to the 10, when they're on it, you go to catch up on that line you feel like, oh, grr, grr, grr. it's like, oh, shit. there he is. Okay. Where do you throw it? That's that's just basics, okay? You can play with it from there. Feel free. What you want to do is throw it in, around grass. Get it hung. Snap it out of there really hard. Don't... Eh. Grass, milfoil, hydrilla, stuff like that. Real fine grass. Pop that sucker out of there, okay? It's going to clear the blade. It's going to clear the hook. And they're going to eat it. Because just think about it. This is in there. It gets caught up in that stuff. And all of a sudden it goes shoots out of there. That's why using a medium rod, you'll feel it kind of load up, snap it out of there, and once it's snapped out, expect the hit. Plus you'll get out and buried, out and buried. It'll slow you down naturally. So you can really work that, that, that spot. Lily pad stems. Throw it in the stems. Don't try to do this when the pads are up and real thick. This is early season, okay? February, March, early April. When those pads are just starting to come up, the bass will move up there because that's warm. It's oxygen. It's good stuff. Throw it in there. Reel it. You know, pause, snap, pause, snap. Then crazy spinner bait. Rattle trap. You know, doing all, everything with a rattle trap. You know, kind of thing. Snap, reel, snap, snap, reel, snap. Gets hung up. Reel, reel, reel until that rod loads big time and just go. 
Nine times out of ten, it'll pull it right out. If not, and you can't get it this way, grab that bottle on that rod and go real hard. It'll blow it right out of there and then immediately catch up to it. Okay. And again, most of the time, you'll come up to it and you'll hit that first stem. And all of a sudden, your rod will go, oop, there he is. Set the hook. Or you'll pop it out and you go to catch up. And that bass has already got it and it's swimming away with it. You set the hook again. Big bass eat chatterbaits. Big bass eat small chatterbaits. This is a you know size comparison. Still 3 8 Larger profile. Smaller profile. Okay. See what I'm saying? Basic stuff, folks. Please ask questions on here. Like and subscribe and all that complimentary stuff. My four colors. A watermelon green pumpkin. Bluegill. Northern waters or lakes where the bluegills the, or bream, brim, however you want to call it, are the main forage. It's this. Dirty water. Nighttime. Tannic water. You didn't hear from me. Okay. Blue, purple, black. Blue, purple, black. Tannic water, purple, black. Trust me on this. Brim. When they're feeding on brim. When they're guarding fry. Or they're guarding eggs. On the nest, throw this in there and dun. A couple short hops. It's where a half ounce works great. Get over that bed and give it a rip. Something they've never seen on a bed before. Okay? Because I'm out of whites. You know, imagine there's a blade on here. Shad colors. Whites. Um, sexy shads. Um, black fleck. Ghost. Colors like that. We're in their shad and they're feeding on shad. Super clear water, whites. And then dingy, little stain on the water, eating shad, or you're just trying to get something different, something to pop. Chartreuse, chartreuse and white. Um, solid, really solid um, color to go with. I'm fishing a lake this uh, this morning or today that was dingy. That's what they wanted. I threw white, I threw black, didn't want either. Shad was the main forage because they were spawning. The shad spawn was going on. Put that on there. 15 bass later, I called it a day. It's as simple as that, folks. Chatterbaits are a ton of fun. They are my confident, confidence bait when the reaction bite should be on. Okay, I throw it 24-7, 365 in the winter time, in the summertime, whenever, any depth, doesn't matter. Chatterbait for me, it's what is tied on more often than not. And that is my reaction confidence bait. So for more, please subscribe and like this video. Um, hopefully I'll have some more. Um, big tournament coming up, kayak bass fishing. Uh, in my Jackson boat, as you can see, let's lean this up there. There we go. Jackson kayak, uh, Kusa FD, uh, Lake Anna, Virginia. Hopefully, you'll come up with a win. That's the goal. As always, uh, win, uh, but a good placement would be awesome. Qualify for the national championship would be great. And I can tell you right now, I will be throwing a chatterbait most of the day. All right. So, with that being said, follow me. You see the kitty? Yeah, he's being all cute now hanging off of me. Uh, with that being said, folks, thanks, y'all. I'll catch you next time. Go fishing. What else you got to do? Bye now.